I'm Brett Finley from One Group's Construction Experts here again with John Schmidt, one of our resident experts here in-house. Uh, good morning, John. Good morning, Brett. Um, so today we want to talk a little bit about workers' compensation payroll limitation. Obviously, in New York State, one of the biggest conversations we have is, is the cost of workers' compensation. Well, payroll limitation is a tool you can use to your advantage to try to help with some of those soft costs um, and drop your premiums a little bit. So, John, if you could, um, what's a brief description of payroll limitation? Well, in New York State, we have a unique uh, situation in our workers' comp that uh, contractors are allowed to limit their payroll that they report on employees involved in the construction class codes. Each year, the state of New York uh, issues on July 1st what the uh, payroll limitation will be. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's $1,305. Mm -hmm. As of July 1st, which is right around the corner, it's going to $1,357 per week. Essentially, what this does, if you're working on a state rate job or you know, your union and your wages are a little bit higher, um, what it does, it caps your payroll per employee on a weekly basis so that if you're paying them huge numbers that might be out of the ordinary, like on a state rate job, uh, you, you can cap that so your comp costs aren't as significant. You know, obviously if the same employee is working you know, on a private job that their wages are regularly $15, $16 an hour, it's going to be different than if they jump on a state job where it's $35, $36. Well, essentially it's the same work, same employee. Um, you really shouldn't get hammered for the difference in wages. So that's, that's one of the reasons payroll limitations exist. Would you agree? Yes, I do. I agree. And, and things to keep in mind here is that when you're looking at your employee's uh, weekly payroll, you do have to take out the premium overtime. Mm -hmm. So that's your first step. You would do that normally. Then what you're going to do is look at the classification codes and make sure that's an eligible code, which are mm -hmm. all the trade codes. Unfortunately, it does not apply to the residential one and two family uh, construction codes, so those do not get limited. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you don't see higher wages in that classification anyway. Um, but it, regardless, it's still unfortunate for that class of business. So essentially you've got your classifications on your workers' compensation policy and there's a guide that shows if those class codes are eligible for payroll limitation. Now there is a number of them. Do you know how many offhand? Uh, I put them on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> nice going. Uh, a lot. Yeah. There, there is a lot. So what we encourage you to do is reach out to your broker or agent. If it's not something they're talking to you about already, you should be having that conversation because it's, uh, it's essentially a tool out there for you to help with your premium and to lower it. Um, is there any rules on when to apply it or how it gets picked up, John? No, it's up to the uh, contractor to keep their records. Uh, when the auditor from their insurance carrier comes in, they're mm -hmm. going to go off of their records and what they give them. Okay, perfect. Well, again, if you have any questions or concerns in regards to payroll limitation, uh, you know where to find us. Thank you for tuning in this morning. And John, thank you for joining me. Yeah. My pleasure. Have a good day. As always, thanks for watching today's videos. If you liked what you saw and you want to see some more, don't be scared to like, share, subscribe, do whatever you got to do down below. We appreciate it. Till next time.